Actually, her and Ray J became an item around town. Ooh, girl. Mm, that's a lot of pressure to know that your ass is selling up to out here. And your ass is round town with Brandy's little brother with all the OGs looking at him going, dude, does he know what that bitch is doing? <laughs> If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share, and subscribe because it is so important to my success here on the YouTube. And if you are not already a part of my Bella Book Club, please hit the Patreon link below. And for a small $5 monthly donation, you can be privy to all the shenanigans before YouTube gets it if YouTube gets it. Now, let's talk about Corinne Steffen's Confession of a Video Vixen, part nine. Oh, where we left off, ice tea cut her off, okay? So, what the first thing you do, you go back to Twixt You Came, okay? And you go back to stripping. If I was old Video Vixen, I would take this old gray thing, the, gray, the old gray dog that ain't what she used to be, take that thing down there to the strip club and I would Trixie the fuck out of it. You heard me? Right. You know, because she's still so young and tender. She was featured. She could be a featured dancer. So she would hop around from club to club to club to whomever would pay her. However, they would pay her because at this point in her life, she has realized that IT has really cut me the fuck off. How the hell am I going to pay for my uh, baby's babysitter? My lifestyle of fooling these negros, making them thinking that I'm a woman of stature, okay? And how I'm going to pay this condo. Now, she said Ice-T bought it for her, but I believe that when he said, I'm cutting you off, that means you're going to pay your own rent or you, you know, because I don't think he bought it for her because she lost it. I think he was renting it for her, the condo, from somebody. What she said she had to do was she had to sell herself in every way. Girl, is that incorporating in the Mr. Marcus video that's out there? And somebody else pointed out to me that she ain't mentioned nothing about that in her book. But I think at this point when she said she was doing whatever she could do to get all the money that she was getting, okay, that part with Mr. Marcus is included in this little section right here. She also is realizing that, you know, she has something to offer. And she needs to attach money to it every time okay now dig this ice ice t told you to do that years ago well a long time ago because he was the first select well the first actor rapper pimp celebrity that you ever messed with there, there should always be a cost because you have a product baby that them niggas want i'm sure that from time to time, I have to remind you all that she got a baby, okay? Because this was the part that made me go, what is wrong with this hussy? Because she could have left the baby where he was with his family, okay? Down there to the Roach House in New York. She was saying that throughout all this parlaying and moving and shaking she was doing, she was staying at friend's house. I'm like, so where is Naeem the baby staying? Okay, now I don't have too much judgment for her for how she do her pussy. That's her pussy. Okay, like I said, the old gray dog ain't what it used to be. Oh, wait, she wasn't an old gray dog then because she was only 21. Yeah, only 21. She's talking about how um, she was spending the nights, she would pack her shit and spend the night with friends. Okay, and I'm saying, who got your baby? You know, where is your where is Lil Naeem at? Because you're not talking about you're packing up Naeem and yourself. You just saying you packed yourself up because you can't stay in the apartment by yourself. So what it sounded like to me was that he she met old old lady named Shirley on Craigslist, asked her, Do you mind taking care of my baby round the clock? 
You know, and Shirley like, come on, Naeem, just come on, come on, come stay with me. Your mother don't fuck with you anyway. I'm going to feed you over here. I'm going to treat you like one of my children. Just come on. So, Meaning, Corinne Steppen pays Aunt Shirley, Miss Shirley, I don't know what the lady name is, but it's got to be something going on for this woman to just take her baby round the clock. Then, okay. she's saying that she found a piece of happiness. Ray J, is your turn. She said one night while she was out partying with a girlfriend, and she's still young and tender, you know, she 21, but you know in stripper age, that shit is more like 57. She's 21. She out partying with her Judy, okay? She sees a young man in the distance, okay? Now, she said age, Ray J had just turned 18 years old, okay? She said that he looked much younger than what he actually was. After reading all this, I'm going to break it down to y'all that for real, the reason why Ray J is put up is because of Corinne Stephens. But hold tight, we're going to get there. So anyway, she at the party dancing. She see the little boy. She didn't connect with the young man the way she wanted to. When the party is over, she told her, Judy, who was that sexy ass 18-year-old at the party? Oh, I know him, girl. Let me take you to his house. Corinne Kern was impressed by the fact that he had a car and a house at 18 years old okay she says she entered the house it was the party house okay he come down the steps rubbing his eyes you know wiping the milk from behind his ears you know what you got to do with them babies he was excited to have met her he and her nurtured a relationship while she was still selling pussy all over the world don't blame me i ain't like this she wrote it. That their relationship actually felt like a uh, boyfriend-girlfriend relationship. Oh, poor Ray J. This is the reason why you fucked up. Okay, because he is young. She 21, okay? I'm sure that ain't his first, you know, bag of greens he ever, you know, had. I'm sure, right? But because she got those special set of skills, I'm sure he like her so he got an older woman she always she already has a bit of a socialite zhuzh to her and um he's enjoying her because she's fun she, she said when she was with ray j he was the only one unlike everybody else that made her feel young that made her you know feel you know pretty and free and you know loved Okay, because none of the other men could do it. That's because the other men were seasoned, okay? And they knew what a hoe was. And that's what you were. That's all you was. And just young Ray J, so young, he wasn't privy to all this information. That's why he just fell in your traps, girl. Them young ones, that's why sometimes you be seeing them old cougars with them young boys. That's because them old, them young boys don't know all them miles that's been on that vagina, child. Now, you know, the niggas from around the way, all them had you when they were 16, 17, 18 years old. Now, she said, Papa, and thank y'all for telling me that um, Papa was Method Man. One of y'all told me that she wasn't going to get that second book if she didn't say who Papa was. Mm -hmm. She said that Method Man was in his feelings about Ray J. Girl, that's all to pretend. No, okay. I'm t I just see the game, okay? When you be a PO for 15 years and then the same nigga bring in different bitches every time he come into the daggone interview. It's my fiance. I be like, what happened to the last bitch? Now, I can't say that in front of him because you know the nigga need a place to live. Okay, so I ain't about to fuck his living situations up. And okay. I would tell them dudes, so this is, you know this is the seventh girl in seven months that you told me your fiance. One of them bitches going to kill you, Mr. Eh, eh, eh. She said that Papa would get jealous. Not that men cannot, because men have feelings too. I'm just saying sometimes they act a certain way in order to make you feel secure in your position with them. Because if he really wanted you to himself, which he know he can't because she acknowledged the fact that he did have a relationship and she respected the fact of how um, protective he was over his family. She liked that, you know, and she was thrilled at the fact that whenever she got with Papa that, you know, she felt like I was in the arms of such a great man. That Ray J had a very tight knit family, okay? And she knew 
that uh, they didn't play about that Ray J, okay? And that mama, we all know Brandy's mother don't fucking play. She treaded very lightly with Ray J around the family because Ray J had just got out of, out of a relationship with one of the girls from 702. Who, y'all? Who, which one was it, y'all? Was it Naturi? Ooh, that Naturi just left her husband to sleep with that dag on Sinqua walls. Ooh, that's a big piece of, big piece of man. You know Sinqua, the one that's playing um, Don D. Cornelius on American Soul? That's a big piece of man. The family wasn't eager to embrace Corinne. And I'm glad that it happened like that. But now let's talk about Ray J's sex. Even though we already know about Ray J's sex because we've seen it on uh, the Kim Kardashian Ray J tape. Now dig this. She said when those two made love, he wouldn't eat the peach. That's what she said. Okay. Now... What was funny was that she said he would go down there and he would kiss and lick all over around the peach, okay? But he would not lick the peach. She said he shied away from it. Maybe he just shied away from it with you, girl, because when he was in that tape with Kim Kardashian, I mean, he, I mean, he, 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 yeah, yeah. His kisses were long and sweet, okay? His lips were full. You know, every touch was like a tender moment. Mm -hmm. I think it was because she looked at him as if he was innocent. And she looked as the lovemaking as pure. Well, bitch, maybe it's just him that's pure because you ain't pure. She remained and constantly, I hate to say infer, but infer that somebody's going to tell Ray J. That his bitch was a hoe. Eventually, her and Ray J became an item around town. Ooh, girl. Mm, that's a lot of pressure to know that your ass is selling the pussy out here. And your ass is around town with Brandy's little brother. With all the OGs looking at him going, dude, does he know what that bitch is doing? She said yes. now the relationship with Ice had came and gone. No, the contract was up between you and Ice. Okay? She said Fred Durst had came and gone. Girl, Fred never came. He never came. He had no inter That was not a relationship, girl. That was a happenstance, okay? That was a damn happenstance. Learn the difference. Relationship, happenstance. Right now, she is juggling Papa, Ja Rule, and Ray J. Oof, that's a bad, bad, that's a bad, bad. She said that her life with Ja Rule and Murder, Inc. had become a drug to her. You know, she loved that um, energy, that fun that she would have around them. She was different. She felt important. She said that when she was in the group, meaning the Murder, Inc. group, they all were up to no good. They understood that about each other. You know, that anything is possible, you know, in Candyland. They was cool. Now, remember I said she was addicted to Ja Rule, okay? She was addicted to Ja Rule, who was the key to the lifestyle that she wanted to lead with Murder, Inc. and hip-hop, you know, the industry, ah, ah, ah. So right. she was good with him. She knew that he had a longtime girlfriend. She said all of her men had longtime girlfriends. None of them were married. Okay, and she was cool with that because she made it a point to not sleep with married men. Like I said, I, I love men. I'm married to a woman, but I love men. If you don't understand them and how their nature works, then you will get played every time. So you got to understand that, okay, there's always a chance that these niggas going to do some devious shit. They'll do it to their mammy and still love their mammy. They'll do it to their wife and still love their wife, their daughter. Shit, I had to call my father up a couple times and be like, nigga. Are you using my credit again? And she said one time when her and Ja was at the hotel, you know, tripping and lunching, you know, they brung home a girl. I told y'all they got the propensity to do three for some, okay? And the girl who was a three for some had got up and she left. That meant, you know, bling, bling, bling. Corinne say she hear Ja on the phone not saying nothing, but she could hear the woman on the other line talking about who is this bitch at, at, at. 
You know, she said the only word that Ja Rule could even get out was, what bitch is you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. Click. Then he got back in the bed and laid down with her, you know, and they hunched a little longer, you know, because Ja Rule will take care of that situation later. Then she talks about how her and Ja Rule, you know, was so much of the dynamic duo that one time they was getting ready to go out. They was doing um, dark liquor and e-pills, you know. He out there, you know, and then he came back in the room where she was, and he looked a hot mess. Okay, he looked like things was getting ready to happen because she assumed that he OD'd, okay, because, or he was fitting to OD. She say she led him into the bathroom before he even got there to get comfortable, he threw up. And she trying to clean him up, you know, you know, I guess, you know, hoes got a heart. She trying to clean him up. She trying to bring him to, and then she said, baby, do you want something to drink? You should drink something, uh, Ja Rule, because you're probably dehydrated. But anyway, she tried to give him some water. He was like, fuck that, just give me some more brand. Meanwhile, you know, her and Papa, i.e. Method Man, is staying in constant touch with each other, okay? She says, basically, he is her refuge and that she cherished the moments that she spent with him locked up in a hotel because that's the only time they can spend with you. Considered her relationship and what she had with Papa solid. Just simply friends, good friends who had sex. Said although she had uh, Ja Ru, you know, she had Ray J, which was love to her. And she had solidarity with um, Papa she still went to, uh, well, went on to complicate things. Enters Dr. Dre. Now, if you have not already done so, please remember to like, share, and subscribe because it is so important to my success here on the YouTube. Now, remember this. The same people that you meet on the way up will always be the same people that you meet on the way down, naysayers, my patron loves. Have a good one.